Live from the NJ.com studio comes the only weekly TV podcast you'll need, where a lofty critic squares off with an obsessed superfan on everything from highbrow drama to lowbrow reality. The cocktail shaker is ready. Prepare for your TV hangover. Now, your hosts, Vicki Hyman and Aaron Medley. Hello, and welcome to TV Hangover. I am one of your hosts, Aaron Lilly, alongside Vicki Hyman. Hey, everybody. Vicki. Yeah. Episode 26. Woohoo! Halfway to a year. Is that? Oh, yes. Yeah. The math there. You know how I feel about that. <laughs> uh, don't forget to follow us on Twitter at TV Hangover Show, at E underscore meds, and at Vicki High, V I C K I H Y. Uh, we also have an email address, TV Hangover Show at NJ Advance Media. Dot com. Vicky, last night you were up watching... Uh, Simultaneously watching The Voice and The Bachelor and recapping both. And I know which one <laughs> was more of a thrill for you. Which one? The Bachelor. You know, actu- actually, I have to admit... Well, yeah. <laughs> because don't you don't normally watch The Bachelor. I've, I've never seen an entire episode of The Bachelor. Mm-hmm. You know what? I still haven't. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? It's not good to start with the, the season finale. Because it's really boring. There are only two women. I mean, yeah. they're all like, oh, I love this person. I love this person. Man, let's get together. Blah, 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 blah. I was just, he looked so, uh, he looked so Special ill event. at ease for both. T- even when he was letting down the woman and he was proposing woman, he both looked like, as I said to you, he looked constipated both times. Do they, are they required to look constipated? This is a requirement. All that In the final episode, they have Ajita. They have to choose between two women. That they both, that they love, they love well, them both. Well, Ben said said that he loved to but then like in the blink of an eye it was like poof oh wait i know which one it is like he talked about it the whole two hours mm-hmm. i'm in love with both jojo and lauren i don't know who to choose blah 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 so blah, was blah. there a turning moment because i was i was going in no, and out no he's full of bs he, from mm-hmm. the be- very beginning of the season everyone knew that he was going to choose lauren it was never any doubt i told you that yesterday before we left the office like it he wasn't in love with both of them. Also, I'm not really sure he knows what love means. Well, he he feels he feels un, he came into the season feeling unlovable because of what of what Caitlyn. No, no, no. Okay, it has nothing to do with her. Okay, no, no, no. That has he said that on her season okay. that he felt unlovable it had nothing to do with Caitlyn. Why? I don't know because kids these days. Okay. I mean, let's be for real. He's 26. Lauren, his betrothed, is 25. They have no idea what they're talking about. Sorry, kids. Um. He's like, I love them so much. And I'm like, you've known them for two months. Can I ask you a question yeah. about The Bachelor? Of course. So um, Lauren seemed very nice and all. Is there, are there, have there ever been any winning women who you actually could see like knocking back a few drinks with who just seem genuine and nice and funny and cool? Or do they all seem kind of bland? Because she just seemed very like... I do think the the women that The Bachelor chooses in the end are usually pretty bland, um, except there was one season where, I can't remember what her name is right now, it slips my mind, but it was Ben Flanick or Flagic oh, or however you say I'm embarrassed. I think I know who, that's the winemaker. Yes. I swear to keep up. His season, the woman <laughs> that he picked was awesome because yeah. she was a total... Uh, which with a B mm-hmm. and didn't care about any of the other women and I thought she was cool and everyone else hated her but they you know obviously they, they broke, broke up. up I will also say that Ashley Herbert she was she wasn't a winner but she went on to become the bachelorette she was on um I can't remember whose season she was on but she went on to become the bachelorette and I think she's cool also she's not bland at all uh, she's a dentist and now she's happily married <laughs> to JP who's the guy she selected and they have a kid together oh, good for them um so, but I think generally the women are, well, they're I was all just wondering. Blamed. I was just wondering. Well, the, the shocker last night was um, who they chose to be the Bachelorette. Yes, which you were convinced. I was convinced it was going to be the number three, uh, what do you call that? The, ru- the second, second place, runner-up. Run- second second runner-up. runner-up. Kayla, mm-hmm. uh, who Ben did not tell he And loved. who, as it turns out, would have been the first woman of color to Absolutely. be a She's Bachelorette. Filipino. Half Filipino and half what? whatever. Um, but of course, in true bachelor fashion, they just could not make that leap. They just couldn't <laughs> do it. So they went with JoJo instead. JoJo, who I'm convinced they only selected because her two brothers are absolutely crazy. I wish I'd seen that episode. It sounded good. It was pretty good. And her mother's yeah. uh, 
allegedly an alcoholic. Oh. Because she chugged a bottle of wine. Like, on TV, she was just drinking it. Straight oh. from the bottle. Straight from the bottle. Straight from Classy. the bottle. Classy. That's what we do on The Bachelor. Um, so I'm kind of glad that's over. Two hours of my life as, I get as back am I. <laughs> no so more, I, don't, I don't get quizzed on it anymore. No more Bachelor <laughs> quiz for Vicky. Uh, so in some news here, Jersey news, HBO is going to have a show that features or project uh, James Gandolfini. Well, it doesn't feature him. He was supposed well, to star in it, but it is his passion project. Yes. Yeah, so it's a miniseries that follows a complex New York City murder case. Uh, and the show will air this summer on HBO with John Turturro, who's playing the role that James Gandolfini would have played. Uh, you know, of course, James Gandolfini died of a heart attack in 2013. Th- it's almost three years. Yeah. And this is a long time ago. Uh, the eight-part miniseries examines the police investigation of the murder, the legal proceedings, the criminal justice system, and life inside the infamous judicial way station of Rikers Island. Ooh, inside Rikers Island. Mm-hmm. Uh, exact air date has not been scheduled. So that's nice. It looks interesting. It's it's one of two projects that Gandolfini had championed that's moving forward. I'm actually more excited about the second one, mm-hmm. which is a drama series that's set at um, McMurdo Station in um, Antarctica. Oh, um, and it's 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 based on a memoir um, by one of the blue collar workers who who live there. Um, it's also about the scientists and the bureaucrats there. Apparently, it is a very grim place, but um, I'm sure it'll be. Um, Good for black comedy as well as drama. Not black people, just no. black comedy. Well, it could be black people there. It could be. <laughs> uh, so, Vicky, a show that premiered last week. Speaking on a, of black people, was that of, your? <laughs> I was. Was that the transition? Um, a show that premiered last week on WGN, a, a network that no one in this office knows anything about. That's not true. No, I do. we know about it. But <laughs> okay. I mean, the other people um, was Underground, a show executive produced by John Legend. Mm-hmm. Um, and it set a ratings high in its premiere, 2.5 million viewers. Which I think I read somewhere is actually higher than some of the premieres for some of the prestige cable shows, like possibly even vinyl. Um, I believe it, yeah. but I can't tell you what channel, like what the channel number is for WGN, <laughs> but yeah. I will certainly find it. You and I both watched the premiere. Mm-hmm. Um, I will say that... As an African American person, the premiere was really difficult to watch. Mm-hmm. Um, As a white person, it was also really difficult. to I'm watch. I'm sure, <laughs> slightly different, but yes, because uh, no, it was incredibly. I mean, there were a couple of moments there that I was like, "Oh my god," I, I, it was jarring. Yeah, um, I will say that I felt the John Legend influence in the music, the musicality of yeah. the show. Um, I thought, you know, the music that was used there was Kanye's um, Black Power. I thought it was no. Black Skinhead. Was oh, it? yes. That's mm-hmm. it. Yes. That was that was like in the first few minutes of the show. Um, but basically, it's about slaves on a plantation in Georgia, Macon, Macon, Georgia. Uh, and one of them, Noah, is basically trying to gather a group to um, make it north to freedom. It also stars Christopher Maloney, who I love. Uh, and he plays a very interesting character. Yeah, I'm not sure not what's sure going what on there. Is. <laughs> like, is he a good guy? Is he? And a you bad watched guy? the second episode, and you still don't know. I did watch the second episode, and I'm still unsure. I think that he is a good guy in a bad situation who will basically just do whatever he has to to survive. But if he can do good, he will. He will. Like, like I think like. eventually he will do good. Um, and then, of course, there are the plantation owners and the twist there, which we, I, we do see in the first episode, is that um, the husband, whatever his name is, you know, I'm not good with names, his brother actually lives in the north in the D.C. area, and he and his wife are going to help slaves on the Underground They're basically Railroad. abolitionists. Correct. Mm-hmm. Um, so unfortunately, that's played by Mark Lucas. Why is that unfortunate? You know, he was um, he was on Buffy the Vampire Slayer, mm-hmm. and I just think he's sort of like a big lunk of an actor and mm. not terribly interesting. Mm. All right. I mean, yeah, his wife is very interesting, though. I think he's fine. Um, it also stars Journey Smollett, who you guys may recognize that last name is the sister of Jesse Smollett, who is on Empire. Two very different who shows. Who also will make a special appearance, I think, in the third or fourth episode. Jesse. Oh, really? Yes. yes. Oh, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Oh, all right. Um, I thought the show was pretty good. Um, It was, it's very powerful. It reminds you of, you know, what happened in our country's history. 
Um, and the first episode, I think, really tries hard to establish that as the undertone. But I have watched the screener for the second episode, which Vicky has not. And I think it becomes more of, like, your typical drama in the second episode. But it still remains this, like, int- very interesting, like, prison break type um, uh, show, which is a very interesting way to do um, a look at slavery and the Underground Railroad. But also, prison like, break. but a very watered-down, generic version of it. I think in the I first know. episode, it was the a lot... The first episode seemed great. <laughs> the first episode was great, and you felt like it was going to be a lot more about the experiences of the slaves and, and you know, everything they did to survive, whereas the second episode, I just felt like it turned into a regular drama, escape mm-hmm. drama, like Prison Break, which, by the way, I loved. Well, the one thing that I'm, I'm curious about, now that you've mentioned that, is that a lot of times with shows, they have a really powerful pilot and then it gets watered down. Mm-hmm. And um, one of the things that really attracted to me to this pilot was the direction and also the soundtrack and how well they work together. It is a very di- very dynamic filmmaking going on here. Um, the opening scene, I think it like you have a camera mounted on a guy running through the woods. Mm-hmm. Um, you see um, Journey Smollett. Car- Bell? Bell, Bell's okay. character. Um, there's this one moment where she's about to tend to a woman who's giving birth and she's like running through the middle of the plantation and the camera's right in front of her and the music's going and you are just right there. It's right. really exciting. Does that continue? No, not really. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but so it's like Martin Scorsese directing the pilot of oh, Vinyl. Yeah, and then and then not doing anything more Basically. with that. Um, so we do have a clip from the show. Let's take a listen. The setup is uh, Noah is talking to a fellow slave about the escape plan. I think I found it. Way to the promised land. Look. Now, this here, this was carved on the jailhouse wall. Now, I don't know much, but I know that there says freedom. We got to find somebody to read this to us. We got to do way more than that. That jailhouse was filled with poor souls being dragged back in chains. You know what they all had in common? It was all alone. It ain't enough to just find which way to go. We got to get a group of us together. Yeah. Be clever about it, find a strength in numbers, because look, when we run, when we run, ain't no white man gonna be able to stop us. I forgot to mention the name of the actor who plays the lead, Aldous Hodge, who is on my show with Tim- Timothy Dalton, Leverage. Oh, <laughs> it's like he was on Penny Dreadful? No, <laughs> he was on Leverage, okay. a show that I really enjoyed. It was on mm-hmm. TNT for a few seasons. Um, he's, he, I think he's great. I think all he's, the actors yes. are pretty good on the... Um, e- except for, you know, Mark yeah, Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, we know. <laughs> except for him. And, oh, the guy that was on The Wire who played the... The older detective. Oh, yes, I know. I saw him at the end, and I couldn't think of his name. Lester Freeman from yes, The Wire, from the who wire. I love he, in everything. He plays, like, what is his relationship? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. The Christopher <laughs> Maloney storyline is one. It's the mystery of the show. Like, we don't know anything about him. But anyway, the guy that was on The Wire. Let's just call him Lester Freeman. Lester Freeman plays Christopher Maloney's. Like, right-hand man. right I don't know. He maintains the red, but he's not a slave. I don't know. Look, we don't know. Um, <laughs> but either way, I will continue to watch uh, Underground. Will you be watching, Vicky? Um, I think so. Um, if I get some time, I might just like burn through the. Um, I have the first four episodes. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you may just uh, catch up on it. Yeah. Another show that stars black people. This is a very special <laughs> episode of, of TV Hangover. No, um, is the Carmichael Show, which this week discussed a very uh, controversial, shall we say, topic. Uh, and we've seen this a lot lately. We saw it on Blackish a few weeks ago. Um, and this week, the Carmichael Show, which is an NBC sitcom, tackled the Bill Cosby scandal. Well, I, I have to tell ta- Make a point about was it the only Carmichael episode you've seen? It is the only one I've okay, seen. Okay, because it's like it wasn't really that different from most of their episodes. It's mm-hmm. like it's, you know how I have always said that I hate the multi camera laugh track whatever, um, because I just think it's really fake and false. And I just love the Carmichael show. Really, I do. Like in general, I'll in, say in this general, one episode. In general, I love. I mean, I watched it. It premiered last um, summer. Like under the radar, six episodes over three weeks, and it was very surprising when NBC renewed it. Mm-hmm. And now they're giving it like you know a really nice primetime slot, a really good slot. Um, um, so I usually hate these kinds of shows. First of all, I mean Loretta Devine is and, always um, divine, and um, Greer, Dave Allen Greer. Dave Allen Greer are just absolutely phenomenal. And I could seriously watch Loretta Devine. They say you know like like read out of the phone book. She will make it funny. She is amazing. Um, but. 
what I think that the Carmichael show does that a lot of these shows do not do is that it's incredibly relevant. to. Th- it's not like, you know, on 30 Rock, it could really be set in any time, any place. Uh, not 30 Rock, I'm sorry. Um, th- um, oh, God, The Big Bang Theory. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't yeah. know why I thought that. Um, the Big Bang Theory and Two and a Half Men, these shows, it, they're just very generic to me. And this one is incredibly relevant to what is going on today in the world. And that is what lifts it above um, almost any other sitcom that's on television right now. I love it. And it reminds me very much of All in the Family back in the heyday. And I know that Gerard Carmichael, the guy who um, created and and is the star of the show, Mm -hmm. is very inspired by Norman Lear. I love it. And so I just have to say that the Bill Cosby show where they're tackling an issue isn't so different from what it normally does. But what are the other issues that they've tackled? Oh, they tackled police brutality last year. Okay. Um, in the other episode, they talked about um, they talked about cheating, which actually I guess isn't um, yeah, it is it, they they've done topical stuff before. Okay. <laughs> um, I well, this was my first time watching, and I watched specifically because I heard a lot of buzz about this particular episode. Mm-hmm. Um, and in the episode, Gerard, uh, Gerard, Gerard, J E R R O D. Carmichael uh, buys his girlfriend tickets to a comedy show and she refuses to go once she finds out that it's a Bill Cosby show um, and there a whole discussion ensues about whether or not um, and I wrote it down because this is something they said whether or not talent Alan Trump's, Trump's morals, morals. Um, which I thought was an interesting uh, way to frame it. And they bring up a host of other celebrities who've been in trouble, including Chris, the Browns, yes, Chris all Brown, the Browns, Bobby Brown, <laughs> James, Brown, James Brown, Michael Jackson, Woody Allen. They name drop Mark Wahlberg. Mm-hmm. Um, so I thought that was ballsy mm-hmm. to call out all those people. Um, so they have a, a couple of discussions about uh, whether or not they should go see the show. And here's one where uh, David Allen Greer brings up a good point. I think that's this clip. Feels like it was a lifetime ago. <laughs> but tonight we're celebrating because we're going to see Bill Cosby. Oh, <laughs> Joe, come on. You're not really going to go support Bill Cosby. Support? No. Enjoy. Now, I'm not going to be a character witness for this man in court. <laughs> well, Cynthia certainly doesn't want to go and see a predator who took advantage of innocent women. Do you, Cynthia? No. Right? <laughs> right. Look, Ma, it's a special day for you. If you want to come, just come. Well, how many women is it up to now? It's Fifty-five. A lot. Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> oh. Fifty-five different women have all come forward. Oh, that's a high number. I shouldn't go. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and I think <laughs> it's funny, but it, I mean, it's poignant. It makes... It hits on uh, a lot of things all in that one little Well, it's snippet. also pointing that this particular show, um, you know, a, a black sitcom about a family is is tackling the Cosby show, which was the groundbreaking black sitcom about a family. Right. Um, so he owes a lot to Bill Cosby. And um, I, I, I also liked in the end sort of like what everybody does. I mean, there are, I think there are very few people who just like wash their hands of the people that they love, you know, mm-hmm. people who, you know, um, don't like what Chris Brown did, but they still like me who still listen to forever on her iPad, right. on her iPod. Um, um, it's, it's really hard to just break from people who have, you know, who have had such a big impact on your and life. And not even people, businesses, at one point they bring up uh, Chick-fil-A or David yeah, Allen Greer's characters like, I like gay people, but I also like Chick-fil-A. <laughs> it's like, me too, David <laughs> Allen Greer. I feel you. Um, you know, but I, I, I thought it was interesting. I will say, though, that I don't think that Gerard. Gerard. Carmichael is a good actor. He sort of took me out of it. He's yes. a little still Yes. Dead. No, you're, you're absolutely story. right. He's okay. not, and and I I don't think that his girlfriend is also. I, I also don't think they're writing her sort of well enough. She, and she's an actress. I don't know her name, but she's been around a long time yeah. um, on African American shows. So uh, she should be better. But I didn't. Yeah, think I, I don't think they're just writing great. her as well enough. But yeah. I think I think he needs to. I mean, he's he is kind of like Jerry Seinfeld. Jerry Seinfeld was not a great actor mm-hmm. either, and he was surrounded by far better actors. And I think it's sort of the same case here. But you can sort of you can forget about it. You know. Right. It's it's easy. So at the end of the episode, basically, uh, Gerard goes to the show, but he said he sat there the whole time and thought about what Bill Cosby allegedly did. And then David Allen Greer's character decides not to go to the show, but instead uh, buys his wife <laughs> for their anniversary, like a suede coat out of the back of a car that still has the tag on it from the store, like the security tag. Um, and then Loretta Devine character says, we all have to draw our line somewhere. 
<laughs> I've drawn all sorts of lines around this coat, <laughs> which she's going to keep, uh, even though it was stolen. So I, I thought it was funny. Yeah. It, it was, it was a good way to handle that particular subject. No, I, I liked it. I, I, I kind of wish it had been a little bit stronger in the end, kind of coming. You know, mm. I know that I just said that it represents like what all of us go through and and the you know and how none of us is ever going to make a complete break from it but you know with such a hyped episode i kind of thought that there would be like just a stronger resolution to it well uh, yeah at yeah. the end they sit down and watch a few episodes of the cosby yeah. show they will they go through all their favorite ones mm-hmm. which of course i remembered all of them mm-hmm. because who doesn't remember uh how great the cosby show was so i think the point that they were trying to put on t- onto it is that you can't discount the entire legacy Mm -hmm. um as gerard said at one point there aren't that many talented people in the world that's true (laughs) there are a lot of people who do really bad things but not so many of them are so talented correct so it's interesting um speaking of things that are less interesting (laughs) quantico (sighs) which i didn't watch this week i know you didn't watch it but i wish you had because well, uh, you told me what happened. That was my only question. Because last week you said, I hope What's-Her-Face gets blown Vasquez. up. And guess what? Her name's Vasquez. Vasquez. Her last name. And I still don't know what her first name yeah. is. No idea. Um, we do have a clip from the episode that I would like you to hear before we start discussing. Okay. Why would the terrorists leave us behind? Maybe they're not as clever as we thought. They panicked, screwed up. No. That's a cell phone. Thank you. They're calling. Answer. We need to know if they're on to us. It dropped. It dropped again. Find a better <gasps> spot. I'll look into this. Okay. Hello? You need to get me listen. What are you talking about? This episode and that one scene was, I mean, it, can you get any cheesier than that? First of all, they're in like, okay, let me let me back up. So Vasquez has the bomb strapped to her, right? That's what we saw last week. Yes. And then the mystery person, ter- terrorist, calls and says that he needs or she needs some files. And by the way, they keep referring to the mystery terrorist as them and they mm-hmm. because they don't know the gender and that annoys the crap out of okay. me. Okay. I'm just at look. Okay. Just saying. So he or she, uh, and they have to go get this file from wherever the FBI is located. I can't remember the building. Not Quantico because they're after the, after that fact. And so Alex and um, Vasquez have to break into a secret room. And then Ryan almost uh, busts them, but he doesn't. So they get the files because apparently it's super easy to steal files from the FBI. Mm-hmm. And they get the files. They hand them off. Oh, they put in a Trojan horse into the file so that they can then track the terrorist. Because the terrorists, of course, wouldn't think that they're going to try to track him or her. Um, and they think everything's great. The bomb diffuses. They take it off. Vasquez is safe. So what do you, wouldn't you think, Vicky, that they would then go talk to someone else about the problem or maybe try to bring in the FBI now that Vasquez doesn't have a bomb um, But wouldn't that make sense? Yes. So, no, I wouldn't expect them to do that. So, instead, what they decide to do is they track the terrorists using their Trojan horse, and they see, oh, terrorists is at a warehouse, an empty (laughs) warehouse on the waterfront of New York City. And they go there, and they're all alone. They both have on their really long FBI trench coats, because, you know, (laughs) that's what people wear. Not the hoodies, though. Not the hoodie, no. They go inside the warehouse where there's a whole elaborate computer set up. Am I spoiling this for you, Producer Alyssa? Oh, she watched it. Okay. So there's a whole elaborate computer set up, right? In the middle of an empty warehouse. Now, I don't know about you, but I live in a regular house. I pay for Wi-Fi, and I still can't get on the internet sometimes. <laughs> so you're trying to tell me that in the middle of an empty warehouse, these people are able to connect to the internet like it's not a big deal. Just saying. So they get there, and it's all quiet and creepy. And then as you heard in the clip, Alex's phone rings. The call dropped, and then immediately rings again, which I don't know about you again. But when I call someone and the call drops, then I have to, like, go back on my phone. I have to dial. It doesn't ring again immediately. Mm. So the whole thing rings untrue. This, no these are your intended. problems with this. I am, like, getting real hyped because okay. the show is ridiculous. I think it 
thinks that the viewers are idiots. Um, and then Vasquez blows up because they didn't follow the instructions to a T. So then Alex runs away from the warehouse, just like running for her life. She goes straight to Ryan's house and she comes in and she's like crying hysterically. Priyanka Chopra is on her Emmy game right there. And never going to happen. No, <laughs> may, but maybe a Golden Globe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> and she like throws herself into Ryan's arms saying she needs help. And he's like, OK. And he like picks up the bat phone and like calls the FBI psychiatry hotline or whatever. And in the meantime, Alex gets a text message and it's a photo of her in Ryan's apartment at that moment. So it was like someone's taking mm-hmm. a photo of them from across the street or mm-hmm. something. I don't know. So then um, she runs out into like she runs out of the apartment runs out into the street or i think her phone rings again and the person's like you know you got to follow the instructions or this show is ridiculous okay i i i i I don't know is this going to be our last quantico recap no uh, (laughs) because i have to keep watching i need to know who the other terrorist is although i think it's marcia cross and now they're trying to frame nima one of the twins to make her look suspicious. But do we do we yet yeah, yeah, do we know it? Are you sure it's Nima? Because I really can't. I still don't know who's who. I think. Okay. <laughs> I have I no know. idea. And we still have to. Is oh, Simon back? Simon is back in Quantico, like mm-hmm. in the old in the flashbacks. And then one of the new characters. I thought he was kicked out of Quantico at the end of the last season. Oh wait, is he not back? I don't know. Okay. Look, there, <clears throat> but now there's another nerdy person who reminds me of Simon, but with blonde hair. He's a doctor. Um, and he has all of the recruits' photos in mm-hmm. his drawer. Creepy. And he keeps like xing off their faces. Mm-hmm. I don't look. I don't know where. This and we never going. found out what happened. Natalie Vasquez, right? Sure. We, we never. We never found out what was the deal with the scar, right? No. Now she's dead. <laughs> now she, we'll never know. Oh well. If you watch Quantico and you understand what's going on and you're not annoyed by this show, please tweet us at TV Hangover Show. I'd like to hear from you. Um, another show that I'm not annoyed with, that mm-hmm. I am watching, that I know you're also watching, mm-hmm. is Girls, returned about four weeks ago on uh, HBO. Yeah, four weeks ago. And in this last week's episode, a lot of things are happening. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about each girl and where they are individually. So Marnie's now married. And still as annoying as ever, the uh, most annoying character ever on Girls. Though? Oh my God, like, you don't have to ask. She is. She she, really she's is. supposed to be. But... But shouldn't she be at least a little likable? Just a little bit. I mean, you felt a little bit bad for her for the first time this past episode because Mm -hmm. of Desi trying to, like, turn their tiny studio apartment into a one-bedroom. Oh, we have a clip of that. Oh, (laughs) okay. Let's do it. Surprise. Welcome to your new one-bedroom apartment. Walk with me, if you will, into your bedroom. Okay. Imagine, if you would, right? Sunday morning. Oh my god. You're lying in bed, browsing podcasts. Meanwhile, on the other side of this browsing wall, podcasts. unbeknownst to you, guess who's in the studio slash kitchen practicing finger picking and making you chilaquiles? Come on, you know how you're always talking about how we need more space? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely said I wanted more space. And yet somehow now I have less space because there's a giant fucking wall in the middle of my apartment. Well, Yes, if you think about it in terms of technical square footage, then you are correct. But we will have more privacy, which is what you meant when you said more space. No, it's not. I literally meant that I needed more space. (laughs) That was an Mm -hmm. F-bomb. Normally, this is a family-friendly show. But you have to leave it in for emphasis because I was totally on Marnie's side. Absolutely. In this conversation with Desi, and it was maybe one of the few times where she did not irritate me because I thought she was absolutely correct. You cannot take your tiny New York studio apartment and put a wall up between, like, your bedroom and the kitchenette. And there's nothing worse than having somebody misconstrue what you said when you said something very specific. Very specific. I need more space. Not that I need a wall between my kitchenette and my bedroom. So that's where Marnie and Desi are in their marriage. And then at the end of this episode, we see her go back and apologize to him and say it was her fault. And this is the one time where I was like, Marnie, uh, you were right. I know. 
And then you go There are a lot apologize. of people to apologize to, and Desi is not one of not them. Not one of them. I don't even know why they got married. I can't stand their whole relationship, especially since he was in a relationship mm-hmm. when they hooked up, and she didn't see that as a problem, continued to date him, and now they're married. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. So that's where but we... But she's, she's also, I think, uh, one of the good things is that, like, I used to hate everybody, and now I can just focus my hatred on her, <laughs> and everybody else doesn't seem as bad, which, you know, maybe that's a strategy they're employing. I don't know. Maybe. Well, this is... Is this the penultimate season? I think yes. next season. Yes, next season's season. the last season. So, okay, so that's where we are with Marnie. Now let's get to Shoshana. Who is back from Japan. No. Right? She's she still did. in Japan? She's still in Japan. Okay. But and she's re- going to be back because she got fired. She did get fired, okay. but she didn't get on the plane because okay. poor... Oh, that's right. Poor... Um, Jason Ritter. Jason Ritter, oh. whom Vicky and I both love dearly, uh, was waiting for her at the airport and she never showed that's up. That's right. Jason Ritter can't catch a break. Yeah, we don't know where she is. She's in Japan. She's in Japan with the guy. With the other guy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's where Shosh is. I mean, uh, otherwise. Can I say something about the, 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 the Japanese, the J- Japan episode, the yeah. third third episode? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, one thing that I never really fully appreciate until this season is, like, I really love the direction of the show mm-hmm. and, you know, the way everything is shot. And I just loved, you know, seeing her, um, you know, with her Miss Kitty earphones <laughs> yes. um, and in her she crazy had her house. Har- Harajuku girl yeah, outfit I just, going I, on. I love the way the show is shot. And I, and I have, like, greater appreciation for for um, the direction and how it's it also it, it's it's shot like an indie film, but it really is you know just a very ballsy comedy. Mm-hmm. And it was very hard for me to just mesh the two in my mind for the longest time. And I think I have finally done it. Yeah, I think this season so far has been great, and mm-hmm. I am always very critical of girls mm-hmm. because typically I don't think like usually I don't think the girls are very likable. I like the guys on girls much better. But this season, other than Marnie, not so Because they bad. are growing up and I think a lot of people are complaining that it's not true to you know, how like I use the word again, how ballsy Lena Dunham has been in showing these unlikable characters. Mm-hmm. But people do grow up and a lot of people are unlikable when they're in their early 20s. Well, speaking <laughs> of people who, who are growing up who are still not that likable, Hannah's not likable. She's more likable than she used to be. She is. The whole she conversation is. between her and her boyfriend about the the adverbs and the little girls. That poem. was bad. That like, was bad. They, and then she goes and interrupts his class in I know. the middle of the day she's, to I mean, she's incredibly it. unprofessional. I will give you that. Incredibly um, unprofessional. I did find in the second episode that um, the uh, when she was helping her father get back his yes. wallet, his phone. I'm not really sure from what it was. From the dude he hooked up from with. From the dude he hooked up with who looks a lot like Peter Scolari, which I thought was hysterical. Yes. Um, and she's being a support to somebody else as opposed to being incredibly self-centered like she normally is. This is so true. I did think that was very nice character development. Maybe, you know, two steps forward, one step back. I guess. But she's going <laughs> to ruin this relationship with her boyfriend. Well, I mean, he's kind of boring. He, he, but she <laughs> needs boring. I think I think she does need stability. Um I, I like him okay. I do not think she needs to get back with um, a- Adam at oh. all. Well, I, well, Please, God, of, no. Well, speaking of Adam, Adam is is pursuing a relationship with Jessa. Which I think makes a lot of sense. I don't like it. I love it. Let I me think tell you great. why. Tell me why. Girl code. You cannot <sighs> date your friend's ex-boyfriend. I don't care how much time has passed, and I don't care if you're still friends, <laughs> and I don't care what the circumstances are. That is unacceptable. I don't know. It's Hannah we're talking about here. She's done and? some pretty awful things in her life. Um, so? I, I don't know. Then, then you She's don't not be, been a particularly good friend. But then you don't need to be friends. Maybe that is... So, so is it okay to abandon the girl code if you stop being friends with her? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. So she's kind of doing that, Jessa. She is. Well, we have a clip of uh, a confrontation that I just said, like to note that Jessa and Hannah have in one of my favorite places in New York City. If you ever go to New York City, you must go to Rice to Riches. If you like rice pudding. Even if you don't like rice pudding, you have to go to Rice Riches. But that's where this scene takes place. Surprise. Welcome to your new one-bedroom apartment. Oh. Wrong clip. <laughs> rice rice pudding? pudding? Rice pudding in bed. <laughs> so mean to me. I'm always mean to you. Yeah, but usually it's nicer. Well, shorts really seem to be getting shorter these days. You're acting so weird, okay? I know you. Something's going on. I'm fine. Okay. Okay, then maybe we're just growing in different directions. Maybe you don't want to be friends anymore. Maybe. Jessa! What? I'm just trying to be open. You know what? I'm thinking maybe I'm going to take my fluent in French toast on the train. If I'm going to hang out with someone who hates me, it might as well be my boyfriend. 
And then Hannah comes back and calls Jess a, a B-I-T-C-H and the C word, which I could not play. That is not a, a yes. curse word you'll hear on this show. Um, but maybe Jess is moving in that direction where she's not going to be friends with Hannah. I, I think she felt a little guilty. Well, she does. I think she's actually the most grown-up person on the show, and I think she's come the furthest on the show, which is why I really want to see Jessa mm. succeed in her relationship with Adam. Because I do think they are fairly well-matched, and Adam has also done a lot of growing up. He has. Okay, can we talk about the scene last week on the third episode where they <laughs> know both what you're talking about, yes. self-gratified? Pleasure. Yes. On the couch, on opposite ends of the couch. Weird. Yeah. I'm sorry. I don't care how old you are. I, I've never heard of that happening. Anyone? I, I, have, I have never heard of it happening Crickets either. in the studio. <laughs> no one has any comments on this. I mean, it was just, it was a little strange. Yes. I thought that took it a step too far. However, if you've experienced this, please tweet us at <laughs> TV Hangover Show. Because I want to hear about it. I'm very confused. It's safe sex. <laughs> Something. I, I guess. It was weird. <laughs> um, and then finally, before we move on from girls, let's just talk about the guys real quick. So we talked about Adam and Jessa. Um, Ray is having this feud with the coffee <laughs> bar across Ray. the street. Helvetica. I love Ray. But I don't understand. Like, he was supposed to be, like, on a community board, and that was, like, a whole thing last season. And now I, I, Who I knows? haven't heard anything about it. I mean, Ray Ray and Marnie should be together. I always should. No, them. I would not wish Marnie on anybody. No, because I think Ray would be good for, for Marnie. Yeah, but he doesn't need to, you know, have to take this woman under his wing. He deserves, like, a fully-fledged, you know, a grown up. That's true. He <laughs> is older than everyone yes, else. Yes, he is. Um, and then, uh, what's the name of the friend? Oh, the one who's dating the news. Oh, anchor. Andrew Reynolds. Like uh, I can't remember his name. Reynolds, whatever his name yeah. is. Like who's dating Corey Stoll, who I love. Um, who's playing like sort of an Anderson Cooper character? Yes, um, a bald Anderson Cooper named Dill. I think they had an interesting <laughs> sex scene in last week's episode. <laughs> I remember when he's like faster? No, now slow. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was really funny. And I was like, "Is El- this Elijah?" I'm sorry, Elijah, his name yes. is Elijah, and I like the fact that they're actually giving him something to do as opposed to just be like snarky and obnoxious. Right. Well, he's like a full, he's like a regular. This he season. is, he's but he yeah, episode. but he's been around and he's never really been given anything to do other right. than be sort of an obnoxious Greek chorus. Right. Well, now I'm just wondering, are they going to break up? Because the way that episode ended, it was unclear mm-hmm. whether or not Elijah was into this whole uh, odd sex rhythm yeah <laughs> that <laughs> dill was into um so girls is i think this is a good season if you haven't watched or if you watched in the beginning and you sort of dropped it you should come back it's it's been okay it's been good yeah you don't you actually don't need to have watched anything no you could just come on back you water's come fine on and water's fine vicky this week you are turning the tables Especially since The Bachelor is over, and you're giving me a quiz. I am. I'm very excited about that. I this. am, and since you don't watch most of the shows that I watch, I decided to just take a, take five different shows yes. that you do not watch mm-hmm. and ask you questions about them that you could possibly know the answers to, maybe not. I'm going to make an educated guess. This is how <laughs> I got through guesses. high school and college. Okay. I'm ready. Okay. On The Walking Dead, what is, according to Abraham, a valid reason for breaking up with somebody during the zombie apocalypse? A, I didn't know if I could find love. I found it with you, but I found it with somebody else more. B, that's from The Bachelor. Yes, it is. Okay, <laughs> let's be clear. I know The Bachelor Sorry. quotes. Next, okay. I'm just giving you that one. Okay, you're amazing, but I just really need to focus on killing walkers right now. C, when I met you, I thought you were the last woman on earth. You're not. And D, I just can't see myself with you in the long term. Because there is no long term. Ooh. All right. I'm going to tell you I've narrowed it down to B and D. And I'm going to go with B. You're amazing, but I just really need to focus on killing walkers right now. <laughs> no. That's not it. It is actually C, oh, which no. was like the harshest thing ever. So he's been like this guy. Abraham has been with Rosita since, I guess, the beginning of the apocalypse. And mm-hmm. she's great. She fights walkers. Great. She's hot. Whatever. He kind of either settled in. Now he kind of sees somebody he likes more. When I first met you, I thought you were the last woman on Earth. You're not. Oh, my God. That sounds like something <laughs> a guy would say. It was harsh. A zombie apocalypse or not. Okay. Yes. Um, now, I know you started watching Shameless, but I know you did not get very I'm far. I'm on episode two. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so what hasn't happened so far this season on Shameless? Has not happened. Okay. A, Chucky gets attacked by a mountain lion after rolling down a mound of human compost on a hippie com- commune in the wilds of Illinois. 
Okay. B, Lip's erectile dysfunction is cured by reflexology administered by his half-nephew's grandmother. C, Kev accidentally sets fire to a neighbor whom he turned into a paraplegic by accidentally cutting the brake line on the man's motorcycle. And D, Fiona buys the family home out of foreclosure using money she earned as a foot fetishist muse. Lordy B, those all seem plausible. And because Vicky's such a great writer, it's really hard to decipher which one <laughs> is not true. Um, I'm going to go with A. Chucky gets attacked by a mountain lion after rolling down a mound of human compost. That, it, that actually happened. Okay. We didn't actually see the attack happen, but he was worried about this mountain lion. At the end, there's like growling and he's screaming. So, oh. so no, actually, the answer is D. Fiona oh. buys the family. The home was the home was bought out of foreclosure, but by Carl from his ill-gotten gains from weapons dealing. Oh shoot! Sorry. I was gonna say D, but then I thought no, that sounds. And, and Lib actually did get reflexology, um, and it did cure his erectile dysfunction. And the episode was titled. I believe come for grandma. Oh, yes. gross. That's gross. All right. Okay. I'm so, not doing well on this. Yeah. So, uh, so on, this is hard. Um, so on Billions. Okay. Sunday night's episodes, a spoiler if anyone hasn't seen it. What was uncovered about the source of Axe's wealth? Axe, of course, being um, uh, Brody from mm-hmm. Homeland. Mm-hmm. Um, a, Axe's biggest client was Osama bin Laden's family trust. B, a 9-11 axe was able was about to be fired on suspicion of insider training, trading, which is why he wasn't in the building when it was hit by terrorists. C, axe had an insider tip that the 9-11 attacks are about to happen and was able to manipulate the market ahead of time. And D, axe was an early investor in a skincare company that specialized in realistic tans for redheads. Okay, so <laughs> it's which one was discovered yeah which one why is axe so wealthy okay so i'm i'm narrowing down i'm throwing out a i'm throwing out d i'm going with b or c i think c is the least realistic but i'm going to go with B. Very good. Yes! Go with your gut. Yes. yes, he was. Um, he was about to be. Fi- he was at his lawyer's office dealing with a severance package when nine eleven happened, and then actually he was able to manipulate the markets. But that was after nine eleven. So okay. that also participated. So yes, yeah, very good. One out of three. Okay, vinyl. Oh boy, vinyl has featured actors playing all of these early seventies icons except for one. Okay. Which one? All right. A. Robert Plant. B, Robert Goulet, C, Mick Jagger, D, Alice Cooper. Do you know who all these people are? I do. (laughs) Um, I'm going to go with C, Mick Jagger. Very good. Because Mick Jagger's a producer. He is. He is, and he is not going to be appearing at all in in, in the season, although he could appear in future seasons. He could. Somebody playing him. Okay. Wait, has vinyl been renewed? um, I think it was, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, okay, last question. House of Cards. All right. This is where I, I either win or, or lose because okay. I'm two and two right now. Election season is underway on House of Cards. Which of the many parallels to current real life... Ca- okay, I'm sorry. It has many parallels to current real life candidates. Which one of these is not a fictional candidate on the show? Okay. Okay. A, the candidate with tenuous links to white supremacists. B, the front runner with a glamorous foreign wife. C, the trust fund baby with no prior political experience. Or D, the social democrat in need of a personal stylist. Which one is not? Yes, there are three of the four are actual candidates on the show. Can I just name the candidates these really <laughs> to in real life? Because that would be easy. I guess you could. Um, so D is obviously Hillary Clinton. B is Donald Trump. What was C? Can you tell me C again? Um, C was a trust fund baby with no prior political experience, which is also Donald Trump. Yeah, isn't there, a are Donald Trump? <laughs> there are two different candidates. There are two different candidates. I'm telling you, there's two different candidates with elements of Donald Trump. Excuse one me. of them might be. One of them might not be the case, though. Got it. I'm going to go with. Um, of course, actually, A is also the possible. Yeah, I was going to say there's A, B, C, and D are all Donald Trump. Um, I'm going to go with. Oh my gosh, there's so much pressure. I'm going to go with C. 
oh. trust fund baby with no prior political experience. What What are you thinking right now? I don't know. I really want to go with A, but I thought that would be too easy. Well, it's neither one of them. Okay, good. It, okay, the social democrat is actually Bernie Sanders. He's the social democrat. But in need of a fashion. A personal style. Oh. You don't think that Bernie Sanders needs to get his no. hair combed? Bernie Sanders... I'm not going to say it. Well, there there is no <laughs> there is no social democrat need of a personal stylist, but oh. there is um, uh, Frank Underwood mm-hmm. is actually the guy who we find out that his father um, was friends with some dudes in the KKK. Be a front runner with a glamorous foreign wife is actually the Republican candidate who has a British wife, very beautiful. Um, see the trust fund baby with no prior political experience is um, Heather, somebody who is running against Frank Underwood, got but it. there is no Bernie Sanders in the race. All right, fine. I got two out of five. <laughs> that ain't bad. But not it's bad, not considering you haven't seen any of the shows. I haven't, but you know what? I've I've thought about binging House of Cards, you even should. though it's been the whole, I know every hold almost on. everything that's going on. You know, hold on, you you haven't seen? I haven't seen any. Episodes I can't. No, of House I cannot recommend you binging on the whole House of the whole, Cards from the beginning. Then yes, do it. I'm gonna do it from and the just, beginning. And just as, Jack, as I told Jack Lugo, yeah. just grit yourself through season three because you're going to be like, this is so ridiculous. I heard that about season three. All right, I can do it. But the thing is that I I think I said in the previous podcast, if you can just like stomach that then you'll be fine with season four because there's something even more ridiculous in season four but you've been prepared by season three okay everything else is great good advice from vicky hyman so that's going to do it for this week's uh, episode of tv hangover don't forget to follow us on twitter at tv hangover show at e underscore meds at vicky high v-i-c-k-i-h-y Subscribe and review us on iTunes, Stitcher, listen to us on Spreaker, and tune in, and we will talk to you next week.